That was awesome. I feel like we should be playing a, a uh, Bob Hope. Uh, Thanks for the memories. Kind of walk on, you know, you know, walk on uh, taping a special across the hall thing. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that was really neat. Um, I was a little bit uh, concerned because at least in this area, like I said, I'm about about maybe yeah, four hours away. We had some some wicked uh, storms yesterday, so I was a little uh, concerned that um, you know that it might not uh, step off. But it, uh, but um, if it's anything like it, it, it is here, it's just uh, sort of uh, cloudy here. So so it was certainly uh, great that they were able to have this thing. And obviously, it's uh, a uh, cause uh, near and dear to Mike and everybody's uh, heart. So it's really a really a neat thing that that um, he does, and it kind of uh, fits into the theme that you were talking about. You know, uh, you, you know, this big uh, big uh, brusque guy. You know, and you know, and his uh, such a uh, soft heart. So it's really a neat a neat event, and I know it uh, raises a lot of money for this. So, so it's great. No, absolutely, yeah, because you definitely get those those two sides of Mike um, when you're talking about you know him busting on the balls of of the guys that are in, there in the room, and then you continue to get these moments with Mike where yeah he's supporting the Haitian Angels, he's supporting the Ride for the Warriors, he's um, you know loving on his daughter and and proudly so as a father, and he, so much so that he wants to do it all over again. So right. <laughs> Here right. we here we go. Fifty two, fifty three years old, and the man wants to start child rearing all over again. Um, yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that the Kennedy Center honors uh, should be calling uh, pretty darn soon. <laughs> Get him his lifetime achievement award. Oh, absolutely. You yeah, know, I mean Letterman, but you know Letterman, buddy guy, you know, uh, you know, got it last year. Dustin Hoffman. I, I don't see any reason why uh, why Michael Mara can't to get one. I think he should get an award from Angelina Jolie for the way he accumulates kids. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Let me play this clip from Friday's show. This is Mike being proud Papa. ...day for me, and uh, I want to talk about it today. Um, Graduation day. Uh, Should I be the one that's this excited? I woke up this morning and looked at my wife, and I went, graduation day i don't know why i think well because you never it's... had your own <laughs> <laughs> yes i did I'm silly kidding of course well, i walked your down, first i walked down the aisle uh with mary Olette holding hands and swinging our hands my uh several of my family members were oh. thrilled that i did that i think that's why nice. do you why do you always have to be silly michael yeah. I said because we thought it would be cool. Mary Olette was like my – I sat next to her because our names uh, in the alphabetical order. Oh, her last name was Olette. And Mary Olette was my – like really, you had – I don't know how it worked, but uh, alphabetically, you had two of the class clowns that were cool class clowns. We yeah. weren't obnoxious class right. clowns sitting next to each other. And uh, Just it like was I cool. spent my entire high school career between Jonathan Spangler and Daniel Spinoza. Right. You're always with them anytime there's anything organized, right? Mm-hmm. Mary Olette could walk in here right now, and uh, I would smile, and I would laugh, and I, I have been so incredibly nostalgic today just thinking about life, just thinking about uh, you know everything. It is such a special day. I'd never dreamed. For all of you parents of younger children, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, that uh, maybe it's because I'm a part-time dad. I don't know. Could be. But this day feels wonderful. It really does. The day that my daughter is graduating from high school. What is that? This is a wonderful song that I think you'll like. The man in my little girl's life. <laughs> this Stop is it. Mike Douglas. The man you know Perfect. You're going to make me get all buttery. Life. Well, Mike Douglas always made you moist. <laughs> he did. Absolutely. Yes, Oscar. So I think... Oh, the bigger pick. I can hear my little girl say, Daddy, there's a boy outside. Okay, stop it. I'm really going to get emotional no, if you no, play it's that. Okay, maybe we can revisit it. Yes. <laughs> there's a bigger picture. Ass. Craig, I know you don't have uh, kids and you haven't gone through this, but what was it like for you when you were graduating? Were you excited about it or were you just like, thank God this is finally over? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, Listening to that again, it brings me back to, um, like I said, my dad had a had a morning radio show, and he would and he would put us on on the air. And I just I just uh, thought about this. On um, every birthday, um, he would have us on the air. Um, he would uh, tape it uh, the night before, and he would talk about us uh, on his morning radio show, little things that we said and little things that we did. And and I do believe when I graduated from from high school, he made a big deal out of it. Um, 
on uh, his his uh, show. So it's interesting um, uh, from that angle, being on sort of the other side of that, and uh, you know, having uh, teachers teachers in the school, you know, will bring bring things up to me that they heard heard my dad say on the radio um, about me. But um, in terms of you know, you know, graduation, absolutely, I, I was. I was ready to to well, to well, blow out of there. Actually, on the morning of my graduation, I had a bum foot, and and all I could think of was just getting across the stage uh, without uh, falling off it, and you know, you know, creating a uh, major uh, major snafu in the in the uh, proceedings. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was the same thing. Well, high school and college, I was you know you know I just wanted to get through it, and that's all that I really did. And and I think my grades uh, my grades. Grades that pretty much proved it. I know, I know guys now who have who have school spirit, and they go back to every homecoming and and they cheer for their college team and even their high school team. And and actually, uh, both are right here in Delaware. And I really couldn't care less. So, uh, I was not a school guy. I was not a books guy. But uh, you and me both. Yeah, I I was the same way. I wanted to just get the hell out of there as quickly as possible. I graduated on Friday. I was at college on Monday because I wanted to get out of the house so bad. Um, and I just wanted to move on. It was, it was a big day for me, you know, and I thought, oh, this is fantastic because I can get the hell out of here. Sure, but, exactly. um, let's, since you brought it up, tell me more about your dad. So he did a morning radio show. Who? Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he's still around. He's 80, 80, 80, uh, two now. He did the morning radio show for probably, uh, 20, uh, 30 years. Um, if there's folks that, uh, that are listening in the Wilmington, Delaware uh, area, uh, they may uh, may remember him, and even even uh, even the, perhaps me. I don't know. He's still um, doing the morning zoo thing right now. I no, it 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 was more of a um, it was a middle of the road station, easy list. Well, not necessarily easy listening, but uh, I mean, I mean, when I think of easy listening, I think of you know, uh, you know. Uh, Montevani or something. It wasn't like that, but it was. It was the easy listening of the day in the 70s and the 80s. You know, with Manolo, uh, you know, Ann Murray, that sort of thing. Um, and and it was. I mean, yeah, I mean, the news on on the top and the bottom of the hour and such like that. And it was the morning drive uh, show. But I mean, he was able able to, to um, have some uh, some fun with it. And it was a little bit uh, free form. And he wouldn't take uh, calls calls necessarily. But it ended up being a very uh, very uh, popular show. And and uh, you know, and was on on uh, for uh, um, years and years. So, um, so I have uh, grown up around uh, around uh, radio, and so I am uh, you know, obviously a, a little uh, familiar uh, with the business. And um, and I am, uh, I guess, guess uh, quote unquote, a radio file. Um, in my car, I, I very rarely listen to uh, CDs. I'm you know listening listening to the radio, and you know, and now uh, of course, uh, of course, uh, these days uh, is uh, on podcast. So. So no, I mean, I mean, you know, and he had chances actually to to uh, move up to to uh, Philly and uh, and to New York. He, he had offers, uh, but uh, he always uh, felt like that was uh, too uh, too um, um, competitive, and he had uh, carved out um, a nice uh, life uh, for himself and his family here. And and uh, he just uh, always liked the idea of uh, being a big fish in in a uh, a, a small pond. So. Uh, I get yeah. it. I, I work, you know, obviously I work in the Burlington Plattsburgh DMA and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people here who have been in this marketplace for 20 plus years and they are locally famous. And, okay. you know, you're right. They're big fish in a small pond right. in comparison to, and you know, I hate to say it, look at the guys that we love so much who have risen to the top, syndicated across the country and now are running a podcast. Now, sure. now the podcast we love, and we think it's probably the best product that they've put out. But at the same time, you'll still hear plenty of jokes come from Mike when he does the little crying bit because somebody brings up money because mm-hmm. the money sure. isn't quite rolling in like it used to. Sure, sure. And when he retired, uh, it was it was late '80s. He did retire as sort of a board op at the end. They did end up uh, flipping the station um, at the end to um, from the uh, quote unquote live and local. To the syndicated uh, nonsense, you know, uh, you know, to the to the Rush Limbaugh's and the Glenn Beck uh, Yahoos of the world. Um, so, so in the last couple of years, uh, 
forward to retirement. And he was he was uh, just basically a babysitter, and of course uh, he hated it, but he couldn't retire uh, quite yet. So yeah. so he had he had he had to uh, sort of uh, ride that out now, or I mean ride that out um, then. Nowadays, uh, you know, I mean, he obviously doing doing the kind of shows that he did. I, I don't think uh, he could do it as, um, these days with uh, you know with syndication and uh, stuff like that, or just you know the you know the um, rigidness of of the programming. You know, I mean, where you got to hit you know, I mean, your soft sets and you got to hit your uh, news, you know, uh, news um, exactly, and you got to hit your um, you know your weather on on the nines and stuff like that. That's actually why. I'm a huge fan of the KCJJ show. I love listening uh, to that to that morning show, which I which I obviously learned uh, from listening to the podcast. I mean, they do the show that I mean he used to do, and you know, and basically, well, not uh, quite to that to freeform, but but um, you know, uh, I mean, that's that's the sort of thing where things you know you know aren't that rigid, and you know, I mean, and. Of course, they'll just go off on uh, you know areas that um, I can't believe that I'm listening to, but um, you know I mean so 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 it's good to know uh, that the sort of radio is still alive in certain areas. So it helps when you own the station and you have your own show. You well, can do what the hell you want. That's true too. But I never thought that I would uh, get up in the morning, turn on my phone, and start listening to a morning show out of uh, out of Iowa. And I think I'm more uh, more familiar with their uh, town the government than I am uh, here here in the local. Uh, um, area but uh, no i love that show <laughs> i agree and there's very few stations that do it that way anymore and there's very few stations that try to produce that quality of radio because of the fact that it is locally based locally focused and really touches the community in which they're trying to broadcast to yeah i mean i mean i mean uh, they run the uh, KC, kcjj they run that station you know at you know at the public trust as a public service and you know I, you know i think uh they do a great job, and I hope we're not getting uh, too inside radio uh, for people. But that is uh, one of my yeah, favorite topics. Like I said, the growing, growing up um, in the business, and you know, and still uh, being in media, uh, working for a newspaper. So those are sort of my, some of my favorite topics to uh, to uh, either talk about or bore people with. I'm not